We're into the Sault Ste. Marie area where we've already had 13 centimeters of snow across the Bruce Peninsula, Simcoe County, Perth County, uh, Gray Bruce Counties, Huron County. You could get, uh, for all of these areas in white, anywhere from 15 to 20 centimeters in the overnight hours. Of course, blowing snow, and that means reduced visibility. Finally, for Atlantic Canada, we did have a severe thunderstorm warning for the Halifax area. They have now dropped that warning because uh, it looks as though it is diminishing in strength. Still a watch area just in case these redevelop. International forecast is coming up at 43 minutes past the hour. Earning rewards just got a little easier. Visit any one of almost 300 Carlson Vaughan Lee travel locations across Canada. Book your vacation and ask for your free rewards card. As a rewards member, you earn valuable points every time you book a trip with Carlson Vaughan Lee travel. Points you can redeem towards free travel or valuable merchandise at a host of prominent retailers. Imagine booking a holiday today to earn free travel tomorrow. It's that easy. Call 1-800-CARLSON for details today. Coming up, snow in Vancouver, snow is a no-show in Toronto, and icy weather in northern China. Hello, I'm Chris Murphy, and this is Earthwatch News. It was a tough drive home from work in the Vancouver area on Tuesday. Lightning is getting the blame for leaving 25,000 customers in the dark. The lack of power meant that some traffic lights weren't working. Crews from BC Hydro have been busy trying to restore all of the outages. There have also been reports of flight delays and cancellations at the city's airport because of the weather. Meanwhile, snow is expected in several areas of the province, including the Vancouver area. Parts of the city also got snow on Monday morning, and it made for a slow drive into work, but there were no reports of any serious problems. People in parts of Nova Scotia are also seeing stormy weather. Thunderstorms have been reported in many regions of Nova Scotia. There's been heavy rain, lightning, and hail. The storms are expected to move to the northeast and across the province overnight. There have been reports of only spotty power outages because of the weather. And heavy snow is being blamed for power outages north of Montreal. Snow overnight on Monday brought down power lines, leaving 45,000 households in the dark. Hydro-Quebec crews spent all day Monday restoring power. The snow also damaged trees in some areas. And residents have been busy cleaning up broken branches and shoveling. And while it's been anything but snowy in southern Ontario so far this winter, the lack of snowfall has officials in Toronto smiling. Last year, the snow plowing bill came in at more than twice its allotted budget after monster snowstorms buried the city in snow. Chris McDermott has more. So far, January 2000 in Toronto has looked remarkably different than the same period last year. The snowstorms that blanketed the city last January caused the snow-clearing budget to skyrocket and forced Mayor Mel Aspin to call in the army just in case. This year, the trucks are parked and waiting, a situation that is a blessing for this city official. We have not been doing any plowing, any snow removal, so we've been saving uh, millions of dollars compared to last year at this time. Last year, the city's snow removal budget was set at $33 million, but because of the unexpected storms, it jumped to $70 million. This year's budget has been set at $41 million. If current weather patterns continue, there could be a surplus at the end of the year. Our budget is based on an average winter. If we don't spend the, the funds 
then it goes back into the general revenue. In other words, any money left over at year's end would go towards road maintenance, such as repaving or filling potholes. Each year, the city saves money on equipment by contracting out much of its business. These trucks and their drivers are on 10 minutes standby, ready to hit the streets as soon as the city asks them to. This year, no, we haven't, uh, haven't had any plowing operation at all. It's all just been salting, and of that, it's been very little. The contractors still get paid, but not as much as they do when it's snowing. We would love to have a winter continuing like it has been for the last month or so. so it would save us spending money, it would save us uh, spreading salt, and it would save us a lot of wear and tear on our equipment. And it would help the city maintain its snow plowing budget in the year 2000. For the Weather Network, I'm Chris McDermott in Toronto. 1997's massive flooding in Manitoba was called the flood of the century. High waters left whole communities submerged. Now a conference in Winnipeg is looking at ways to prevent more flooding in the Red River Basin. About 300 scientists, politicians and scholars from across North America will meet over the next few days. Some people are calling on governments to link their drought and flood planning instead of treating them as separate issues. In environmental news, the Ontario government says its mandatory deaths for vehicle emissions are working. Tony Clement says there's been an almost 7% reduction in smog-causing pollutants since the program was put in place a year ago. The Ontario government is hoping for a 22% reduction by the year 2004. And finally, cold weather is just what's needed in northern China as the city of Harbin puts on, to put on its international ice sculpting contest. There are teams from over 100 countries, including Canada, Australia, France, and Italy. One of the major sites this year is the Millennium Tower. It's about as high as an 11-story apartment building. and Almost half a million people are expected to visit the exhibits. That is your environmental news for the next 25 minutes. We have your long-range forecast in less than five minutes' time. Stay with us now. Your local forecast details are next. forecast is coming up in 10 minutes. Also, check out our website at theweathernetwork.com. It's only natural for your lips to seek comfort. Now Mother Nature provides it. New Blistex Herbal Answer goes beyond protection to soothe and hydrate with herbal extracts, including aloe, chamomile, shea butter, avocado, and jojoba. New Blistex Herbal Answer, the soothing herbal alternative. How is the climate of southern Ontario affected by the Great Lakes? Bodies of water generally take a longer time to heat up and cool down than land does. The Great Lakes are no exception, and because of this, wind blowing off the lakes moderate temperatures all year long. The lakes also affect the amount of precipitation during winter months. Where the wind blows off the lakes, snow squalls are frequent and snowfall abundant. online at theweathernetwork.com. 
Well, not just snow, really, out west. That's a big story. Mm. The cold through the prairies, uh, yep. not just into your, well, through your overnight, obviously, but also for Wednesday. I want to throw a wind chill, for example. Regina, minus 16 degrees. This is your afternoon high, not even your morning. But with the winds about 40 kilometers, it's going to feel like minus 36. And it's safe to say all the prairies will be below seasonal through Wednesday. Uh, easterly winds, the story in Alberta. And that's good news for skiers, because when you get easterly winds, you start to get that uplift. And that's going to provide a little bit of snow uh, in the foothills. And we're continuing to see snow fall across Vancouver Island. So some fresh snow for the slopes there. These ski conditions are brought to you by Fidelity Investments, where 15 million investors put their trust. Here are the ski conditions for your area. On the first line, you will find the name of the ski resort the number of trails open, and the amount of fresh snow in the past 24 hours. The second line describes snow conditions or indicates if the center is closed. You can also access our website at theweathernetwork.com for a complete listing of ski conditions. National ski conditions are coming up at 52 minutes after the hour. Paisley? No. Floral? No. Ah, uh, yeah. Hello, Jim. I'm Dennis. He mentioned billiards at the interview. You have a lot of tough decisions to make in life. With Fidelity Investments, your mutual fund company doesn't have to be one of them. Oh, the stripes. <clears throat> you are watching the Weather Network. Stay tuned for your local forecast every 10 minutes on the Thames. Along the BC coast, we're going to continue to get these waves of instability coming on through uh, the morning hours, so still the possibility for some wet snow, but then by the afternoon, it's more like wet flurries or even showers because southern coastal areas, temperatures will be hovering around four to five degrees, but quite cold north coast and uh, into the interior, especially in the northern and central interior, quite a cold day for Prince George and across the Canadian prairies, a blustery day in Alberta and Saskatchewan. So the temperature that you see is the daytime high. Doesn't tell the whole story. It's the winds as well. It's going to make it feel even colder than that with uh, even some light snow uh, possible up against the foothills, flurries elsewhere. Manitoba, northwestern Ontario, lots of sunshine. It's going to be very cold, but at least it will be sunny if you're working in the office looking outside and becoming colder now into northern Ontario. Uh, for southern Ontario, it's going to be a Wednesday night situation because this low right here is going to bring some snow Wednesday night through to Thursday morning. We could get four to eight centimeters, including in Toronto. And still fairly mild for eastern Quebec and Atlantic Canada. Cooling down, though, by Wednesday night and Thursday, it will be colder for you. And uh, a little bit milder across the southern prairies, getting a little bit closer to seasonal norms, so breaking out of the deep freeze. And then on Friday, some snow in the prairies. Well, you get the same low price every single day. My job is making sure stocks put away, making sure price tags are up, and making sure customers are served. So you can bring whether you're a contractor or whether you're the guy down the street that's just coming in for a light bulb, you're guaranteed the low price in town. If you find the same item elsewhere at a lower price, we will match that price and give you an additional 10% off. This low price guarantee is effective throughout the store. Our goal at the Home Depot is to have the best price in town. Far enough.
The legend appearing on the left side of your screen indicates the latest highway conditions for your area. Visibility is indicated by the color shown behind the road's number. For further highway conditions, check out our website at theweathernetwork.com. Highway conditions are provided to us by Provincial and Territorial Transport Ministries and by the Alberta Motor Association. The conditions are updated throughout the day on the Weather Network. No matter what the road conditions in your area, please drive safely. Would you recommend? The new Benelin formula. Benelin, the cough medicine doctors recommend most, introduces herbal relief for early cold symptoms. New Benelin First Defense Herbal Medicine, your first defense at the first signs of a cold. Benelin, the cough medicine doctors recommend most, introduces herbal relief for early cold symptoms. New Benelin First Defense Herbal Medicine, your first defense at the first signs of a cold. Do you have any comments or suggestions? Call our talkback line at 1-800-463-9463. Give us your feedback. After all, it's your weather network. You're watching the Weather Network, covering weather and environmental issues 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Snow and ice. Some people shovel it, some people curse it. In China, they build with it, actually, sculpt it. And this is in the, uh, we're looking at, about, we're going to use some 20,000 cubic meters of ice. And this is the city of Harbin's International Ice Sculpting Contest, attracting about 110 foreign countries, including uh, Canada. And this is going to take place, uh, and it's going to use about, uh, about the next three weeks, expecting 4,000 people working on it to put it all together. Our next local forecast is coming up in 10 minutes. Also, check out our website at theweathernetwork.com. We've got to make a decision on this white. Well, what about this? Malibu white. Too plain. Hawthorne white. Too busy. It's white. You have a lot of tough decisions to make in life. With Fidelity Investments, your mutual fund company doesn't have to be one of them. Leonard, white is a very demanding color. I didn't even know white was a color. 
Chris Murphy and Randy Renault with you. We'll have all your weather details coming up very shortly, but I want to throw some uh, temperatures plus the wind chills in, so certainly for your Wednesday afternoon. Uh, let's start with the interior BC. Prince George, it'll feel like minus 17 with the wind chill, minus 10 without it. That's below seasonal. Smithers as well, minus 13. You throw in the wind chill, minus 24. So uh, it's not just the prairies, although of course uh, Edmonton you're looking at about minus 15, wind chill, minus 26, and you throw some snow in that. So very cold across across the prairies, and uh, with all those details and more, we've got Randy standing by with us now. Thanks very much, Chris. Uh, this low right here, and in particular that uh, line of thunderstorms, is weakening right now, so we're down to just showers in Halifax. Greenwood right now reporting a little bit of lightning, but uh, it looks as though those thunder showers are finally calming down. Kind of a rare event. We had thunder showers in the Toronto area, uh, I guess it was uh, Sunday night into uh, Monday morning, and that very mild air, that same very mild air, still being pulled up into Atlantic Canada as it races uh, towards the center of this low right here. Very deep, very strong low. And it's the other effect is it's pulling or helping to pull cold air down through Ontario. That cold air blowing across the lakes is creating some snow squalls. We've had some pretty active snow squalls, streamers, into the Sault Ste. Marie area, and as well along the shores of Lake Huron through Goderich and Kincardine and uh, across the Bruce Peninsula as well. There you can see those three cold fronts with a strong flow, northwesterly to westerly flow, across Ontario, starting to cool things down. You don't have to cool down anymore in the prairies. It's cold enough. Big ridge of... Um, an Arctic ridge right here. Now the cold air is also being enhanced by this area of low pressure here. It's a seasonal feature. It begins to develop in the winter time just over Baffin Island. And then if you get a ridge of high pressure in the western Arctic, well right in between those two we get what we call an Arctic outflow, which means the air is coming out of the Arctic, basically from the Arctic Circle. And that's made for some really frigid conditions across the prairies and uh, dangerous wind chills for some areas in the overnight hours. You can see how these isobars are a little bit tight together, so very cold wind chills. For BC, it's just this instability continuing to come in to the south of that low. You can see basically where the center of that low is right there. So you get this instability coming in, cool air in the mid-levels, and it's moving over the relatively warmer Pacific waters, and so you get these little clouds, these barrel cells that bubble up, and there they are that's a very unstable air mass so it's producing some snow but it's also even produced some thunder showers with uh, the possibility of hail looks as though it's calming down right now the instability seems to be stabilizing just a bit and we're not getting uh, the kind of uh, snowfall that we were seeing a few hours ago but we have had a fair bit of snow about nine centimeters along the sunshine coast victoria and uh, Port Hardy both received a couple of centimeters of snow, very wet, sticky snow. Snowfall warning still in effect, though, the possibility of an additional 5 to 12 centimeters for outer coastal areas through Wednesday morning because it's not one system that's coming in. It's just this continuous, these waves coming in, waves of instability. So it could pick up again. And as you move further inland to the south coast, the inner south coast, uh, four to eight centimeters uh, possible through to Wednesday morning. There's a look on the radar. As I said, though, it's uh, really spotty right now. There are your expected wind chills in the prairies. Very, very cold temperatures when you factor in the winds. And there are the areas with the snow squalls, both through the Sault Ste. Marie area as well as Huron, Perth, uh, Gray County, uh, Simcoe counties traditional snow belt areas. First of all, look at the uh, streamers coming right past Whitefish Point, right into Sault Ste. Marie. They have weakened a little bit right now. We're not getting the heavier accumulations that we're seeing a few hours ago. And there's a look at those snow squalls coming off of Lake Huron. Now, the thunder showers in Halifax have calmed down, so they've dropped the warning for you.
The international forecast is coming up at 43 minutes past the hour. You know, two of the most important things in my life are in my hands right now. Young or old, married or divorced, widowed or single, everyone needs a legal will. Without a legal will, others can decide who will get your estate and who will be the guardian of any minor children. I wrote my own will quickly and easily with a solicitor approved Canadian legal will kit. It was so simple, I just filled in the blank spaces to make a will that's legal in all provinces. It saved me time and money, and I didn't need a solicitor. I now know how to change or revoke my will at any time, and importantly, I have peace of mind, knowing that my family is secure. Don't risk your hard-earned estate. Have your final say with a Canadian legal will kit. It's only $29.95 plus postage. It's okay. Call National Direct now, write the number down, and have your final say. Order yours today. What effect do the mountain ranges in the Yukon have on their weather? Mountain ranges channel winds, block storms, intensify precipitation on windward slopes, or suppress it on downward slopes. The most influential are the St. Elias and the Coast Mountains. These ranges are an enormous barrier to both Pacific storms and mildness. Yukon winters are long and white. Snow blankets the ground and ice covers rivers for a chilly seven months. And you recommend? The new Benelin formula. Benelin, the cough medicine doctors recommend most, introduces herbal relief for early cold symptoms. New Benelin First Defense Herbal Medicine. Your first defense at the first signs of a cold. Benelin, the cough medicine doctors recommend most introduces herbal relief for early cold symptoms. New Benelin First Defense Herbal Medicine. Your first defense at the first signs of a cold. This Weather Network local forecast is brought to you by The Home Depot, North America's largest home improvement warehouse, where you'll find guaranteed low prices and experts who can help with any project. Our next local forecast is coming up in 10 minutes. Also, check out our website at theweathernetwork.com. associates have helped hundreds of communities in times of need because we know communities aren't made of nails and boards communities are people our neighbors our friends and our families Visit us online at theweathernetwork.com. The Weather Network presents The Hidden Treasures of Attractions Canada.
Perched on the top of the second highest summit in Quebec's eastern townships at 1,110 meters above sea level, the observatory of Mount Megantic has one of the most powerful telescopes in eastern North America. Several criteria make it possible to determine the best site which can accommodate an astronomical observatory. Among them, its position on a mountaintop as high as possible is important. The brightness of the sky and the stability of the atmosphere are also important criteria. The nights have to be dark and the atmosphere has to be very calm. This means a sky with a minimum of water vapor, clouds and atmospheric particles. Frequency of clear nights in Mont Megantic is comparable to any other region in Quebec. But this mountain offers the optimal conditions. Located between Montreal and Quebec City, Mount Megantic is retreated enough to be protected against urban light pollution. The Hidden Treasures of Attractions Canada has been brought to you by the Weather Network. For more information, visit our website. Travelers forecast is coming up at 12 minutes past the hour. For more detailed international information, go to the weathernetwork.com. Coming up, snow in Vancouver. Snow is a no-show in Toronto and icy weather in northern China. Hello, I'm Chris Murphy and this is Earthwatch News. It was a tough drive home from work in the Vancouver area on Tuesday. Lightning is getting the blame for leaving 25,000 customers in the dark. The lack of power meant that some traffic lights weren't working. Crews from BC Hydro have been busy trying to restore all of the outages. There have also been reports of flight delays and cancellations at the city's airport because of the weather. Meanwhile, snow is expected in several areas of the province, including the Vancouver area. Parts of the city also got snow on Monday morning, and it made for a slow drive into work, but there were no reports of any serious problems. People in parts of Nova Scotia are also seeing stormy weather. Thunderstorms have been reported in many regions of Nova Scotia. There's been heavy rain, lightning, and hail. The storms are expected to move to the northeast and across the province overnight. There have been reports of only spotty power outages because of the weather. And heavy snow is being blamed for power outages north of Montreal. Snow overnight on Monday brought down power lines, leaving 45,000 households in the dark. Hydro-Quebec crews spent all day Monday restoring power. The snow also damaged trees in some areas. Residents have been busy cleaning up broken branches and shoveling. And while it's been anything but snowy in southern Ontario so far this winter, the lack of snowfall has officials in Toronto smiling Last year, the snow plowing bill came in at more than twice its allotted budget after monster snowstorms buried the city in snow. Chris McDermott has more. So far, January 2000 in Toronto has looked remarkably different than the same period last year. The snowstorms that blanketed the city last January caused the snow clearing budget to skyrocket and forced Mayor Mel Laspin to call in the army just in case. This year, the trucks are parked and waiting, a situation that is a blessing for this city official. We have not been doing any plowing, any snow removal, so we've been saving uh, millions of dollars compared to last year at this time. Last year, the city's snow removal budget was set at $33 million, but because of the unexpected storms, it jumped to $70 million. This year's budget has been set at $41 million. If current weather patterns continue, there could be a surplus at the end of the year. Our budget is based on an average winter. If we don't spend the, the funds, then it goes back and it generate revenue. In other words, any money left over at year's end would go towards road maintenance, such as repaving or filling potholes. 
Each year, the city saves money on equipment by contracting out much of its business. These trucks and their drivers are on 10 minutes standby, ready to hit the streets as soon as the city asks them to. This year, no, we haven't, uh, haven't had any plowing operation at all. It's all just been salting, and of that, it's been very little. The contractors still get paid, but not as much as they do when it's snowing. We would love to have a winter continuing like it has been for the last month or so. so it would save us spending money, it would save us uh, spreading salt, and it would save us a lot of wear and tear in our equipment. And it would help the city maintain its snow plowing budget in the year 2000. For the Weather Network, I'm Chris McDermott in Toronto. 1997's massive flooding in Manitoba was called the flood of the century. High waters left whole communities submerged. Now a conference in Winnipeg is looking at ways to prevent more flooding in the Red River Basin. About 300 scientists, politicians and scholars from across North America will meet over the next few days. Some people are calling on governments to link their drought and flood planning instead of treating them as separate issues. In environmental news, the Ontario government says its mandatory deaths for vehicle emissions are working. Tony Clement says there's been an almost 7% reduction in smog-causing pollutants since the program was put in place a year ago. The Ontario government is hoping for a 22% reduction by the year 2004. And finally, cold weather is just what's needed in northern China as the city of Harbin puts on, to put on its international ice sculpting contest. There are teams from over 100 countries, including Canada, Australia, France, and Italy. One of the major sites this year is the Millennium Tower. It's about as high as an 11-story apartment building. And almost half a million people are expected to visit the exhibits. That is your environmental news for the next 25 minutes. We have your long-range forecast in less than five minutes' time. Stay with us now. Your local forecast details are next. Light and snow blanket some communities, and while this taste of winter wasn't too